Hey, it's Rick with LearnDigitalAdvertising.com with a quick video tip today. And we're, today we're going to use Google Analytics to research in market segments. And the goal of this really is to then take the information that we learn from in market segments reports in Google Analytics and then apply that to a Google Ads account as an audience. Um, so we're going to kind of go through what all this means and uh, should be pretty quick, less than five minutes. So first off, let's talk about in market segments. I've got the report pulled up in Google Analytics. And in short, what these are is this is Google's lower funnel view of traffic on your website. So what Google says is, let's take the home and garden, home decor uh, in market segment, for example. Google has grouped all of the users on the internet based on their search activity into this little bucket and says, you know, right now, these people are searching for home decor type products, for example. Um, that is what this measures. It's actually a tool that derives, though, from Google Ads itself. And why Google has this is so that you can learn about these different segments and how they behave on your website through Google Analytics and then apply that to your Google Ads campaign. So there's two ways you can really do that. You know, one is where you can actually run campaigns to just a certain in-market segment. So if we have one that's performing really well, um, we could just run maybe a display campaign, for example, to that segment. Um, but what we use it for more often, because we haven't had a lot of success with that, we use it more on the retargeting targeting list for search side. And it's a little bit misleading because it's not actually a retargeting list. Well, it, yeah, it's actually not a retargeting list at that point. Um, but what, the, what we basically do is say, okay, here we have this shopping campaign, for example. Let's add the in-market segment as an example for home decor to our shopping campaign. And then let's increase our bids 30% to that audience because we know from this report that they're going to convert more, they're more likely to convert and that sort of thing. So that's sort of what we're going to try to derive today from Google Analytics. Um, some cautionary uh, items before we start. Um, you always want to make sure there's statistical significance in evaluating any report in Google Analytics. Just because one in market segment looks a little bit better than the other, that can vary over time. Uh, so if you're, especially if you're a seasonal business, um, it can also be the kind of thing where your sample sizes aren't large enough or different enough, or your conversion rates aren't different enough to really know for sure that the data you're looking at isn't a fluke. So in all of this that we do, we're going to try to identify possible opportunities in Google Analytics. Then we're going to move them into Google Ads, observe them, and make decisions there. Um, so this is an ideation process. Um, so first thing I'm going to do from this report, um, in, in market segment report, I want to look at what my typical conversion rate is. So today I'm going to I'm going to hinge all of this on the all goal conversion rate. And on my website as a whole, I have a 2.51% conversion rate. My approach for this video is going to be, let me find all the audiences that say have higher than a 3% conversion rate, because they're going to be substantially more likely to convert. And let me maybe take a look at those. So right in your filter box here, you're just going to switch over to advanced, and we're going to include all items with a goal conversion rate of greater than 3%. So because there's so many different in-market segments, and today I've decided I don't want to look at the low converting ones, I want to look at the high converting ones. That's not always the case that that's going to end up working out better in terms of your return on ad spend, but um, I think it's a good way to start. So now I've sort of filtered this down, and the only thing I'm seeing are any of the in-market segments that have a higher than 3% conversion rate. You can see that here in the table. Now. What I would look at here, uh, and, and another cautionary tale, I'm not going to teach a class on statistics today. I'm not uh, qualified for it. Um, I will say there are statistical significance calculators where you could actually plug in the number of sessions and the number of conversions, and they'll do some calculations to try to help you understand is one segment um, really significantly more likely to convert than the other. But the layman or simple approach to this really is if I have lots of data, 33,000 users, for example, and lots of conversions, 1,600, for example, it's a pretty solid data set. I can be pretty confident in this goal conversion rate. Now, again, seasonal items and everything uh, apply here. But as far as this experiment goes, what I'm going to do, though, is use that kind of logic. Because what I don't want to do is take my, let's take something with really low sessions. So I'm just going to sort by sessions here. Um, I have some in market segments that are extremely highly converting, right? 8.7%, that's way more goal conversion rate. But at the same time, it's only 23 sessions and two conversions. Very likely to just be a fluke. Actually, not necessarily very likely to be a fluke, but no evidence that that's actually gonna hold true if this, instead of being 23, we're 23 million. So 
Um, that's just a simple sort of way to think about this is focus on you know where you have a lot of data. So in this particular case, and this is a home and garden related website, I can see the people in the home and garden category who are looking for home furnishings or lights and fixtures or bedding. All of these are you know pretty sizable data sets, lots of conversions and great conversion rates. That's how I look at this, very simple. Now, a couple things to consider. Because they're higher conversion rates doesn't mean they're a better audience to bid on, right? At the same time of these being higher conversion rates, it may be more expensive traffic. So we want to keep that in mind. And that, again, is why this is sort of our, our sort of ideation zone. Once we figure out our in-market segments here, what I would do next is jump over to Google Ads. And I would say, and we'll just kind of back up a little bit here so that we can uh, see um, how to get here. Um, but I'm within a sp specific campaign. Um, I would go to audiences and what I can do, and, and there's actually some existing audiences here. And if you haven't used these audience reports or don't use audiences right now, you should learn about them. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is add the audiences as observation basically. And all that really means is that you're gonna put that audience within this report, no bid adjustment, and you're gonna get all sorts of data on it. So you can see some of my existing audiences like all users, for example. Um, I can see here how many, how, what the conversion value has been for that audience. Uh, I can see what, you know, a lot of the spend and all that, the conversion value over cost, which in this case would be like the return on ad spend. So you're going to get all this data. Um, and that's really what we're trying to do here. We want to move these in market um, segments over to here so that we can start capturing data. So the way I would do that, let me just jump back quickly to the other browser. Um, home and garden, home furnishing. So what I would do then is I'd say, you know what, this one converts a lot better than the rest of the website, right? 3% instead of 2.5%, which, you know, mathematically about 20%, right? Really ballpark. Um, then I go into Google ads. I'm going to go add my audience. I'm um, just going to go ahead and add it to an ad group um, for the sake of uh, this. And now you get all different choices here, but if you go over to browse, um, you have some different choices. So who they are isn't what we're talking about here. Those are the affinity audiences. We have another video on that. What they're actively searching for is actually exactly what we're looking for. Those are the in-market uh, segments. So these are the people who are actively doing it. And when you expand this, you'll see it says in-market audiences, if you can't remember that. And now what we're going to do is look for the specific um, home. Let's see. Forgot that one again. Home and garden and home furnishings. So we're going to do that again. So I'm going to look for a home and garden. I'm actually not gonna add the whole thing. I'm gonna drop this down and then I'm gonna say home furnishings. I think home decor was one. So just by checking them, you'll see they'll add to the right column here and then I'm gonna hit save. Now, I'm not gonna do that for the sake, but just so you kind of know how to do that. Now, what I'm gonna do then is set a reminder for a couple weeks from now, assuming that my volume is pretty high. And then I'm gonna come back to this exact same table here and I'm going to review then the data on that audience. And again, um, we know that that audience converts a little better from Google Analytics. We don't know that that's a better audience to bid on because again, the cost per click could be higher on that audience for some reason. There could be higher demand because it's a high converting audience. There's a lot of reasons why we may not want to bid any higher or lower on that audience, but it is a great way to start to determine should that audience be in the mix. So when we add that line item, and we look at our general, say, average conversion value over cost, which again is like ROAS or return on ad spend. If that audience, let's say, you know, our best audience here is, you know, bringing back 5.14 for every dollar we spend. If that audience is bringing back $10 for every dollar we spend, then we may say, hey, let's bid adjust. Let's bid adjust, you know, from, you know, zero increase to 100% or 120% or something like that. So, um, I hope that makes sense. It's a really just to try to introduce that concept and most importantly, you know, understanding why these reports are here. Um, and that's, you know, really why they're here. It's a Google ads play. There isn't a lot you can really do with this data. You can make some logical assumptions based on how Google builds these segments as to who these people are and then maybe decide what websites to target. I mean, you can make some other sort of guesses, but, you know, the main function and the way we use these are to just kind of understand what is the conversion rate of this audience. And if it's a lot better then we may want to, you know, bid differently in Google ads. As an aside, I would say, though, there are plenty of really low converting segments that are just inexpensive traffic. So it's not as though you should avoid all those other ones, but typically, you know, these are like the low hanging fruit of, you know, audiences, especially if they, you know, convert significantly higher. We have seen situations where in market segments with lots of volume convert twice as often, you know, as, as the overall traffic. So 
Um, you really want to look for those little nuggets and figure out, you know, if you have opportunities in Google Ads to, uh, you know, squeeze more out of your spend. Hope it helps. Comment below. Thanks.